Around that star is the Shekinah glory cloudburst, symbolizing the Shekinah glory that was over the tabernacle. George Washington said, I want that to be on the dollar so that people will recognize the contribution that the Jewish people have made to the United States of America. Not only are today's Christians being taught to be pro-Jewish and pro-Israel, the strange doctrines of the Talmud and the Kabbalah are also creeping into churches and being taught as Christian doctrine. For example, many pastors will use the term Shekinah as if it were something from the Hebrew Old Testament, when in reality, the word is never found in the Bible one time. So the Shekinah refers to the divine presence. And it's a feminine word, by the way, mm -hmm. not masculine. For example, if Moses de Leon had come out and said, I have an idea, God is a woman, that might not have gone over so well. But now he was saying that the ancient Rabbi Shimon was teaching us about Shekhinah, the feminine half of God, and her romance with her divine partner, the Holy One, blessed be he. So there is a belief that God could be both male and female. The Shekhinah is the indwelling presence of God in the universe. It's what emanates from the being of God. But for Jews, Shekhinah and God are one and the same, and it is almost forbidden to separate them. Okay. God simply manifests himself or herself in the form of the inspiration of the Shekhinah. Shekhinah is something that's part of the Talmud, something that's part of Judaism, not Christianity. And yet, how many Baptist preachers have used that phrase, Shekhinah glory, in church, and it's not even scriptural? Friends, we need to grasp this, that the Shekhinah glory is in us. This presence that we talked about, this presence that came in this upper room to the disciples, this Shekhinah glory, it's in us as believers. The Bible is clear from Genesis to Revelation that God is a he, not a she. And to teach that God is both a he and a she, you've got a different God. The Christian Bible teaches that man was made in the image of God. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Bible says that a man ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. So according to 1 Corinthians 11, man is not to cover his head because man is in the image of God as opposed to woman. That's why even in Genesis 1:27 it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. They were created male and female, that he was created in the image of God. What does it mean to be in the image of God? To look like God. Because when Jesus walked on this earth, he was a man. And God the Father is masculine. And so uh, this is a blasphemous teaching of New Age mysticism, of worshiping, you know, Mother Earth and the female spirit and the goddess and the Kabbalah and the New Age. That's where all this stuff is coming from. This is the shape of the letter Shin, Hebrew alphabet Shin. Very interesting letter in the, in the uh, language. It's the first letter in the word Shaddai, the first letter in the word Shalom, first letter in the word Shekhinah, which is the name of the feminine aspect of God. Live long and prosper. Image of Sirach. Father of all we now hold true. That's great. People don't realize they're blessing each other with this. 